the shifting of the FMCG business from the Adani Group into Adani Wilmar strengthens that too. By the way, standard disclosure, Adani Group owns NDTV uh, uh, Profit and you're watching NDTV Profit. So just make that disclaimer while we speak about uh, some of these group stocks. But it's the market at large which deserves attention. Rahul Arora, CEO of Nirmal Bang Institutional Equities, joins in. Rahul, good morning. Thanks for joining in. Um, I remember our conversation when we nudged uh, that circa 25,000 mark. You were a bit skittish then. The markets have come off a little bit for reasons which may have been different from your reasons. Be that as it may, we are 4% lower and we may see a bit of a bounce today because the global markets are doing okay. What is your house's central message to clients this morning for Indian markets? Uh, good morning, Neeraj. Thank you for having me on the show. So I think, Neeraj, if uh, there's one thing that the markets have taught us over the last months is that every time you get such a large dip and the two most recent ones being the union budget and the uh, central election results uh, they're being very easily bought into and uh, you know it just goes back to the same conversation uh, that we keep having in terms of the liquidity that's there in the market of you know about one and a half two lakh crores of cash on the sideline on the sidelines uh, and the kind of pressure that fund managers are in given their ctcs are locked into their own funds uh, that you know if you get a dip like the kind that you got yesterday or on the fourth of june on the budget uh, you know, you don't want to wait for it to go much lower. And therefore, you f see a lot of follow-up buying that's coming in through the next day. I still think this is just a minor blip. I, I still don't think valuations have aligned themselves to what the earnings potential or, or the earnings outlook of India is. I think, you know, the earnings outlook is not that strong, uh, you know, basis what we've seen uh, in the ongoing earnings season as well, which is the first quarter of the fiscal. Uh, ideally, it would have been nice if you could have had a 10, 15% healthy correction and you would have stocks that were down about 25, 30, 35%. Uh, but I think at least Neeraj, so one good part is that uh, a lot of the market that was seeing excesses, that's where the valuations are coming off also uh, in a material fashion, whether it's autos, uh, defense, capital goods, uh, EMS players, uh, consumer durables and electricals. I think that's where you're seeing the maximum pullback chemicals. So that's a bit heartening to see that where the excesses were there, they're pulled back. But I still think that... Uh, you know, we really can't call this a correction, either. I mean, it's as you as you very rightly pointed out, it's only four percent at a twenty-five thousand Nifty. Uh, for it to make a meaningful dent, it would need to be 10, 15 percent. But I think this might be very easily bought into. Is my is my sense? Well, does that mean if you're an investor who's been sitting on some dry powder or cash, uh, now may not be the best time to add incrementally to the market? So, would you start adding incrementally at these levels? No, uh, so I think, uh, Samina, the point is, you know, what could make the market fall from here? I mean, you know, you survived two wars, you survived a 5% inflation, uh, you know, you got a bit of a hiccup on the election day, you had the increase in capital gains taxes, and yet you're at a 25,000 Nifty. Now, obviously, what we saw yesterday is not the end of the phenomena as we know it, because I think if you get into a situation where the U.S. cuts uh, rates, you will continue to see this carry trade unwinding. But the point is, where does India figure in all this? The point here is if India manages to hold on to its interest rates, uh, it may actually become a positive beneficiary of this carry trade un unwinding that's taking place between the US and Japan. And that could actually cause foreign flows to still come in. Uh, so like I was telling Neeraj, I don't think that there is a material case for a downside even on this news flow. You know, even if you fall another two, three, four percent from here, it's not a bad time to start deploying incremental capital. Not necessarily on the manufacturing, defense, and automotive side, but I think there is still some pockets of the market that are starting to show value. But uh, I would use yesterday's those to start nibbling in a little bit and average on the way down. Rahul, good morning. Tamanna here as well. Um, when you're saying nibbling in a little bit, are financials looking exciting? Because through our conversations yesterday, even when uh, you know the market was looking like it's in a tough spot, uh, the commentary coming in was that financials are actually now well poised from an Indian perspective. Uh, so what are your favorites there? So uh, I think, Tamanna, you're absolutely right. I think the only pocket of the market that's exuding uh, value at an aggregate level has been BFSI. Uh, you know, the market's been waiting for this sector to rally in a material way, but that's not happening in a very aggressive way. Yes, HDFC Bank has pulled on from the lows that it hit earlier this year by about 20-25%. Uh, but I think valuations are still not out of whack. I think if you look at, say, an ICICI bank, that's probably the most expensive banking stock in India today at about 2.5 times. Uh, Access would be shy of that. Indusind would be at about 1.5. Uh, and the elephant in the room on the public sector side, which is state bank of India would probably be trading at about 1.6 times. Yes, uh, there is still a fight for incremental deposits and you're seeing, uh, you know, marginal deposit rates rising and you're 
therefore going to see a little bit of pressure on net interest margins. Uh, but I think progressively, as you look at the back end of this year, say, you know, the Jan to March quarter that the RBI was to go in for a rate cut, uh, I think that you might uh, see if, you know, if people are looking at banks as a one to two year investment, uh, this might be the best place to buy. Apart from some of the names that I listed, I think even from the mid cap space, if you look at Federal Bank, now that a change of guard has been announced and the market has liked it, that looks like an interesting play. Uh, and let's not forget the first order that the prime minister signed after resuming office for the, was for the third time was a housing order. So I think housing finance companies could also be, uh, you know, interesting. We like names like Avas and Home First Finance. Uh, and lastly, I think insurance. Uh, again, you know, a pocket of the market that really hasn't done too much. Uh, ICICI approved life in terms of stock price performance has been one of the best results this quarter. Uh, obviously, you know, buoyed by ULIPs across the board, but I think uh, what they're trying to do on the protection side of the business, uh, there is some value there. So, I mean, these are some stocks in the overall BFSI space that we like, but it is clearly, uh, without a second thought, the most overweight sector at our broking house at this point. Rahul, do you think that that's really the theme, that uh, you're going to get that investor love or, or trader love if you've performed on your corporate numbers and um, no easy way out there? Uh, I think that's right, uh, Tamana. I think if you look at this result season, it's told you that, right? I think any stock that has done well, including large cap names and including the fourth quarter uh, results that we saw in April, May, uh, they've been rewarded with a 5 to 15% upside. And conversely, for anything that's missed, it's, uh, you know, been punished with a 5 to 15% downside, regardless of it being market cap oriented. So uh, I think it is going to be very stock specific. Uh, like I was saying a little earlier, barring PFSI, it's a little difficult to take. Uh, an overall top-down view on any sector right now, you'd have to be very stock specific. But uh, I think, you know, the, the issue, Tamanna, is uh, we've been analyzing upgrades to downgrades at our broking house at the end of every quarter. Uh, and if I was to broadly look at, say, the last four quarters average, you'd still see at the end of every result season, by and large, 55 to 60% stocks getting downgraded uh, and just about 40, 45% getting upgraded. So I think we're still in that cycle where we haven't gotten into an aggregate earnings upgrade cycle, and which is what is going to make stock selection at these valuations a little more challenging. Uh, you know, that being said, there will always be stocks cheap at a 25,000 Nifty also, and there'll be stocks expensive at an 8,000 Nifty as well. We just need to find those. But as you rightly pointed out, I think most of the triggers, barring the US election that's, uh, you know, slated in three months, are pretty much out of the way. So I think it's by and large, going to be centered around central bank action and earnings from here. Rajat, very quick view on Interglobe Aviation. It is hitting its support area, and now today it has uh, shown a 4300 reopened tick. So, if it were to cross 4500, then there would be a lot of gumption. Otherwise, it will remain range bound between 4300, uh, uh, say 4200 on the downside and 4600 on the upside. You want to come in on this one? Uh, anything that's, uh, you know, defensive space facing, consumption facing, more India centric domestic themes, could those be sectors one could add? Uh, incremental allocations to in your opinion or for now it's best to just stay put and not not add anything more to these sectors at least uh so i think samina the way to pay domestic consumption i mean uh sorry to sound like a, a bit of a, a broken record here but it will probably be through banks and i'll tell you why uh, because i think if you look at let's say fmcg since you uh, pointed consumption most fmcg stocks since the fourth quarter's results till now are up between 25 to 35 percent uh, save ITC, which is probably trading at about 27, 28 times. The rest of the consumption pack in India trades anywhere between 45 to 60 times. Uh, now, if you look at the result season gone by, barring Britannia and uh, Tata Consumer, uh, which reported volume growth of about 8 and 10 percent respectively, though Tata Consumer's beverage volume growth was zero, uh, the others are still at about, you know, that 2 to 5 percent. So I'm not really sure if I want to be paying those kind of valuations for these kind of volume growths just yet. Uh, consumer discretionary could be interesting from the point of view of hotels and aviation, uh, but you know it gets me a little uh, concerned that uh, low-cost airlines are now trying to become full-service airlines. In the past, uh, we've had instances like Jet Airways and Kingfisher where the markets have not really taken too kindly uh, to such kind of moves. So you know profitability is one of the key reasons that Indigo got its valuations. But I think the hotel sector in India is doing remarkably well. And uh, I heard you guys talking about Zomato. 
uh, it was actually one of my biggest calls, uh, you know, when the stock was at 45, uh, you know, it was, uh, you know, it was literally a sitting duck at that point. Uh, stocks up dramatically since then, about 6x. But uh, I think this could go a very similar way to Westlife, uh, because I think there was a very long period where Westlife was a loss-making company. Uh, it realigned its focus to cash flows and return ratios and subsequently got re-rated multiple times over. So that could be an interesting play because I think even if you look at insurance to go back to where we started, there's a lot of interest coming in at Policy Bazaar. So people are saying, should we just buy the aggregator instead of buying individual stocks and try and take the benefits? So I think these would be some ways that I could probably look at playing uh, consumer discretionary, but consumer staples by and large, I think at this point, uh, I'd stay away. Maybe you could throw in an Alcobef. We like the beer sector, so we're fairly positive on United Breweries at that as well. You know, uh, it's it's interesting, uh, Rahul. We were just, uh, you know, think, thinking we, we were thinking about your view on Zomato, and it's interesting you came in with Zomato. Just want to understand that in that consumption space or discretionary consumption space, what is the next bet like a Zomato? Do you see any merit in a delivery? Would you wait to see what Swiggy does when it comes in? Uh, at these valuations, there is no next Zomato. Uh, to be very honest, I think. Uh, you know, at 40, you know, you remember at the peak of the lockdown, Indian hotels had dropped down to 60, Inox had dropped down to 180, 200. I mean, these were sitting ducks at that point. And, you know, anyone knew that these were going to be multi, multi baggers. Uh, obviously, Swiggy, when it comes in, will reference its valuations from Zomato and it'll get a listing pop. And generally, things, you know, you do see a sway uh, in investor sentiment for the short term. We saw that when Burger King listed as the only direct competitor to McDonald's. But I think eventually the incumbent, uh, you know, sort of gets its mojo back. Uh, if I take you back years and years back, I think this has happened with Maruti when, you know, foreign players came in and, uh, you know, the Maruti stock price suffered. Uh, but then look at where the market share sits today after all these years and everyone coming in, it's still sitting at 50% plus or there and thereabouts. So uh, I think it's a little difficult to take a call on consumption, uh, consumer discussion overall. But I still think, Tamanna, on a relative basis, hotels, uh, and I say this, not just, uh, you know, pre, uh, business hotels, but even luxury hotels uh, with foreign tourism sort of picking up. I think that could be probably one space where you could still see the best returns from a consumer discretionary sector uh, standpoint. Okay. Well, um, about a percent higher. Uh, Nifty IT is leading the way. The one which was pummeled the most yesterday has bounced back the most. So that's to be kept in mind. But yep, Zomato, Schneider Electric on results is doing well. G shipping has bounced back too. Rajat Bose, your initial thoughts, the way the bounce back is happening, are you liking the mood and are you buying into something on open? Or are you recommending somebody buy something on open? As you were discussing consumption space, uh, over the short to medium term, Zomato uh, might move up from here. Once it crosses 285 decisively after that, there would be a further upside, uh, say something like 310 to about 325 level. Uh, uh, disclosure has it that I'm a, a shareholder in Zomato. Uh, Zomato, uh, in my view, is actually getting more prop because of Blinkit. Blinkit's performance is really very, very encouraging. So uh, that way Zomato, uh, is going to go up. United Spirits, another stock I personally hold. United Spirits also looks very good to me because it's showing a flag formation. Chances are once it crosses 1450, it, it might go up to something like 1550 on the upside. So you can look at that. And uh, the other thing that I would like to say is that go for ITC. ITC will again test 500 levels. So at least a very short term move can happen there as well. But the elephant in the room will be Reliance Industries. If it manages to stay above 2950, then this uh, um, rear guard action will definitely get more uh, ammunition. Um, Rahul, just one quick uh, word. I don't remember the note, but uh, before we wrap up, you came up, you guys recently came up with a note wherein you either upgraded a, a sector or downgraded the sector completely. Excuse me for not remembering it, but it came three, four days ago. Um, was it on hospitality? Was it on something else? Can you, can you, can you tell us about the re latest piece of research on, on a particular sector? 
No, so uh, I think Neeraj, they were both. Uh, there was one on the hotel sector where we have, you know, put out a very detailed thematic, which I was just alluding to, and we've downgraded the entire defense sector to a sell. Uh, I think the valuations in the defense sector, we have looked at the last three, five, and seven year averages. And I think most of these guys were trading between one and a half to three standard deviation above long term averages. Uh, for the growth prospects, we were not able to justify uh, the valuations. But uh, as I was talking to Tamanna just a few minutes back, I think for uh, hospitality, we've been interacting with the management's off late as well. Uh, there seems to be uh, business travel has uh, sort of, you know, been the crux of it uh, over the last a uh, couple of years, but I think there is a huge anticipation of foreign tourism revival. Uh, and there was a very detailed piece put out there where we have anywhere between, uh, I think, 15 to 20% upsides uh, on uh, most of the stocks, uh, you know, Indian hotels, uh, Chalet, uh, Lemon Tree, uh, EIH. So there'll be a couple of them that are accumulates, but it's it's by and large a very positive uh, view on the hotel sector with, uh, you know, a, a recent downgrade to sell uh, on the defense sector. I'll just... Uh... One quick question on real estate. We've seen some of those earnings come in and they've all been better than what uh, we expected. Pre-sale numbers also look quite healthy. Now with this whole debate on indexation and what it's going to do for the sectors, anybody's guess, but uh, keeping in mind everything that we have, how do you approach the realty pack? Are you a buyer into this sector? And if yes, if you've got any preferences here, that should be helpful. Uh, so, you know, Samina, interestingly, uh, the Prime Minister often quotes that 65% uh, of India's population is under the age of 35. And KK Mystery used to always say when he was at HDFC uh, that the average age of uh, India buying its first house is somewhere between 35 to 40. So that's the extent of the demand that's there. But I think right from 2020 till now, uh, the kind of home sales that have happened, I don't think that in the, when you look at the absolute rate of growth, I don't think that's going to be, you know, that much. I think the focus may shift a little bit towards commercial and retail as opposed to residential because as you rightly pointed out, some of these have had very, very sharp runs. Uh, financing has been very easy to get for a very large time. Mortgage rates were very favorable as well. Uh, so I don't know, you know, and, and, and on top of that, uh, I think if you look at barring the last quarter's results, I think if you look at last five or six trailing quarter's results of Indian IT companies, at an aggregate level, there have been about 50 to 100,000 layoffs that have happened in aggregate. So that would affect the South market in a very material way. And the replacement uh, of a real estate property is very, very large. Once you buy a house, I think it sticks with you for at least 15, 20 years before you, you know, sort of go out and buy your next one. So uh, I would not be as gung on real estate today as I would say a few years back. Real estate ancillaries, where the replacement cycles are shorter, for sure, whether it's tiles, paints, et cetera, we could have that discussion separately. But or maybe even housing finance, but predominantly real estate, I would probably start looking more at commercial and retail than I would probably look at residential real estate. Rajat, uh, keen to know your take on uh, the real estate space. Uh, various reasons why it's uh, up today. One of them could obviously be because they were worst hit yesterday. But uh, are you seeing anything interesting here for a medium term or a short term trade? I'd say that uh, you can uh, you can buy for a short term uh, take very short term I would say say things like uh, Goodrich properties or DLF but the point is that I quite agree with Rahul that at the moment real estate may not be under uh, may not be in focus and uh, only uh, there might be some scalping opportunities and things like that uh, if they go further up you will see even the best of the lot, just as I said, Goodrich Properties or DLF might also uh, uh, invite fresh sailing. So they have extended their run quite a bit. And I uh, I really compliment Rahul on, uh, uh, on uh, putting a sell on the whole of the defense sector. Well, that's the view coming in uh, from Rajas. Rajas, anything else that you've identified uh, since market opened in the last 15 minutes that could make a good trade either on the long or short side? Well, uh, you, uh, you, can, uh, you can buy, say, a stock like uh, Oso Cleland, which is now around 250. If it crosses 253, then it can go up to something like 266. And if you are planning for good investment bet i would say there is one stock in the banking space that you can buy is uh, idfc first bank vaidyanathan said that from the third quarter things would really move up and 
it has come to its major support area, which is just below 70. So your risk is much less and it's a slow mover, but you will get good opportunity. Uh, uh, Rahul just wanted to know if you have a view on autos. Uh, they were seeing a lot of seesawing over the last few sessions. Yeah, we do. Uh, I think, uh, you know, there has been a reasonable uh, pullback in terms of valuations. Uh, we've seen intraday pullbacks in Tata Motors, m and Maruti at various points over the last one month or so. Uh, so I think on the passenger vehicle side, we still continue to like Maruti. I think we're still looking at about a 13-14% compounded growth over the next two years. Uh, I think ever since Mahindra spoke about, uh, you know, their focus on return on capital employed, the stock's been a multi-bagger, but I think uh, given the way we are looking at uh, the monsoons panning out, I think this could still continue to be a good year uh, for trackers uh, as well as for commercial vehicles. So I think uh, Mahindra and Ashok Leland respectively could be played there. Uh, and I think if you're playing two wheelers, uh, you know, and I'm not including the uh, EVs uh, in this because there's been a lot of talk about EVs in the past. But I think Hero uh, is not a bad bet. Uh, you know, you're also getting it at about a 3% dividend yield or thereabouts. So I think in different sub pockets of uh, auto, I think uh, these would be some of the ideas that we. Uh, would recommend. And I think if you're playing it through auto ancillaries, uh, we do like names like Sansera Engineering. Uh, we have like, uh, you know, a proxy to say a laid in like a Jamna Auto in the past. So uh, we are not going in and aggressively buying. I think most of these stocks that I have told you would have anywhere between a 10 to 20% upside. Uh, but we are selectively definitely looking at uh, ideas in the auto set. Okay. Rahul, Rajat, we'll leave it at that. Thanks so much for taking the time out and being with us. So really appreciate your time this morning.